Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can download and install SBT or Scala build tool on your Windows operating system. Installing SBT is a two step process. First of all, you need to install Java on your system and then we will be able to install SBT on our system. And if you have installed SBT on your system, you will be able to create and uh, maintain Scala project on your Windows 10 operating system. You don't need to install Scala separately if you already have uh, SBT. So let's get started. So first of all, you just need to open your favorite browser and search for Java JDK. And then the first link which will appear here will be from oracle.com. So just click that link. And once you are in the Oracle website, you will be able to see this kind of web page. And here you can see it says Java SE Development Kit 8 downloads. Now you just need to scroll down. And first of all, you just need to accept license agreement. So you just need to uh, check this radio button. So just uh, select this radio button first of all. And once you accept license agreement, we will be able to download the executable file for Windows for JDK, right? So in our case, we will be downloading the executable for Windows X64, which is a 64-bit operating system. So this is the last option. So I'm going to select this last option, which is for Windows X64 and it's an executable file. So I'm going to just click on this exe file, which is going to start the download, right? So I have already downloaded this executable file. So I'm going to just uh, cancel this download for now. And I will directly go to the location where I have downloaded this. And let me minimize the browser also. And it's an executable file. So you just need to double click on it. And first of all, you will be able to see this kind of uh, user account control warning. You just need to click yes here. And I'm going to minimize this window. And now you will be able to see this kind of uh, installation wizard. You don't need to do much here. You just need to click next and leave everything as default. And note this location, this is important. So this will be installed in your C folder and inside your C folder, it will be installed in the program files. And then there will be a Java folder created and then Java JDK folder will be created. So this will be the default location. Leave it as default. I'm going to just click next. And now the installation of Java will start. By the way, uh, let me show you how you can check whether Java is already installed on your system or not. So for that, you can right click on this window uh, icon here. So right click and then open the command prompt. And once the command prompt is open, you can just uh, type Java C here and then press enter. And if it says Java C is not recognized as an internal or external command, that means Java is most probably not installed on your system, right? So for now, I'm going to close this uh, terminal and we will check it again once this installation is finished. And now you will be able to see this kind of window which says destination folder. As we have uh, already discussed earlier, if you don't have any good reason to change the location of the JRE, just leave it as default and then click next and wait for the installation to complete. And now I can see this message which says Java SE Development Kit 8 update successfully installed. That means Java is already installed on my system. And now I just need to, uh, you know, set the environment variable for Java and JRE and also the Java home and then I will install the SBT. So I'm going to click this close button and now I will right click on this windows button once again. And this time I will uh, just select control panel and let's see where Java is installed. So just open the folder explorer also and then click on my PC or this PC and then go to the C directory here. And inside the C directory, we will just browse to the program files. And here you will be able to see Java folder. And here you will be able to see these two folders. One is for JDK and another is for JRE. Okay. So I'm going to just minimize this for now. And in your control panel, 
you just need to select the system and security so just select this option which says system and security and then select this option which says system and once system opens on the left hand side you will be able to see advanced system settings so just click this option which says advanced system settings and then once this advanced system settings opens here you just need to go to this option which says environment variables and under environment variables we are going to go to the system variables first of all and then we will select the path variable so, so just search for path variable you can see on the left hand side path is written and then either double click on it or you can just uh, click edit also okay so i'm going to click edit on the path variable now we will just open the folder where uh, java is installed so go to the jdk folder first of all inside your java folder and then go to the bin folder and then just copy this path the whole path and then just create new so in your environment variable just press new and then paste this path and then press enter and same we will do for the gre folder so go back to the java folder once again and then this time go to the jre folder and then bin folder and then copy this path up to bin and then create new and then paste the path of the jre okay so we have pasted the path of a jdk bin folder and jre bin folder now click ok which is going to set the environment variable and now we are going to set the java home environment variable so for the java home environment variable we will set it in the user variable at the top okay so under this section just click new and then just write capital java underscore home so everything in capital and java and home are separated by this underscore and now open the folder once again java and this time you just need to select the jdk folder and then up to jdk folder path you just need to copy this so you don't need to go to the bin folder this time for the jdk you just go to the jdk folder copy this path from the top and then paste it there in your uh, variable value for the java home so variable name java home variable value is the folder path up to java jdk and then click ok and then click ok and then click ok and you can close this window now once again we are going to go to the windows button here and right click on it and once again we are going to open the command prompt here so just click command prompt which is going to open the command prompt and in here you just need to write java c once again so java c together and then press enter and now you can see there is a big list of uh, commands which are printed here and it says usage java c options and source file so java c command is used to compile the java source files so it's showing us the correct usage of java c so that means java is already installed on our system and now we just need to install the spt so let's go to the browser once again and this time search for scala download and the first link which will appear here will be uh, this website called scala minus lang dot org forward slash download so just click this link and we are in the download section of the scala lang dot org website so just scroll a little down and in here you will be able to see these options these two options to install scala right so you can see uh, the first step is to install java jdk which we have already done right and then the next step is to install scala there are two ways of installing Scala on the official website of Scala. One is to download IntelliJ if you are a fan of IDEs and other is to download SBT if you are comfortable with command line tools, right? 
So we are going to choose this option, which is the second option. So just click download SBT and this will uh, redirect us to the SBT website. So scala minus sbt.org forward slash downloads, right? And then there is a Windows MSI file to download here. So you can see uh, Windows and under that there is a red button here which says sbt 1.0.1 msi we will download this file which is a msi file which is a installable file and once this download is complete we are going to install it so now the msi file is downloaded so i'm going to double click on this msi file and i'm going to minimize the browser and first of all i will be able to see this kind of uh, setup window so i will click next here and I will just accept the terms and conditions and click next. Now I will see this window and here I can see the path where SBT will be installed. So, so this is the default location. So I don't have the good reason to change it. So I will leave it as default and I'm going to click next once again and then I'm going to click install and now SBT is installed on my system. So I'm going to just click finish here. And now I will browse to a folder where SBT is installed. So I will go to the C directory and in the C directory, go to program files x86. And here you will be able to see this SBT folder. And inside the SBT folder, there are three folders. We want to go inside the bin folder. And then we want to just copy this path and set as an environment variable, okay? So just go inside the SPT folder and in the SPT, just open the bin folder, okay? And once again, I'm going to right click on the window option here and then click the control panel. And once the control panel is open, I'm going to go to the system and just click system here and then click advanced system settings once again. And then once again, go to the environment variables and once again, just double click on this path variable and just paste this path if it's already not there. OK, so by default, this installer is supposed to, uh, you know, set your environment variable. So I can see directly this environment variable already set here. But if it doesn't set this environment variable, you just need to create new one and paste the bin folder path for SPT. So in my case, it's already there. So I'm going to just click OK, OK, and I'm going to just close everything. OK, so let me close everything. And now I'm ready to create my first Scala project using SPT. So for that, I'm going to once again open the command prompt. And now in the command prompt, I'm going to just create a folder in which I want to, uh, you know, create this SBT project. So in here, I'm going to create a folder. You can create a folder using MKDIR command. So I'm just going to write MKDIR, for example, SBT or Scala samples, for example. So I'm going to just write Scala samples and then press enter. And once I do this, I can see the same folder in my uh, folder explorer also. So here in my C directory. So I'm going to go to my C directory and inside my C directory, I'll go to the users and whatever your username is. And I can see this Scala sample directory is created. So you can either just copy this path and CD to this path. So I can just do this also CD and that path where this directory is created, or you can CD directly to this Scala samples, right? Now, once you reach to the Scala samples uh, directory, you just need to create a project folder here. So I'm going to just write SBT PROJ for SBT project. And before this, I'm going to just write MKDIR and then space, okay? Which is going to create a directory called SBT projects for me, okay? And then I'm going to do CD SBT project so spt proj okay so once you are in spt project directory you will be able to verify it from here also so you can see under spt samples i have spt 
projects directory and here I will uh, create my first Scala project using SPT. Now even though my project directory is empty, I can give this SPT command. So I'm going to just give SPT command and then press enter. And for the first time, it's going to take some time to download the necessary files and directories. You can see it's downloading necessary files and directories related to our Scala project. SPT also compiles your current project if it's already there. But in our case, there is no project. So it's just going to download the necessary files related to SBT installation. So now the downloading of the necessary files for SBT is finished. And now our installation for the SBT is also finished. And now you will be able to see this kind of command prompt. And this means that we are ready to work with Scala and SBT on our Windows operating system. So for now, I'm going to just exit this command prompt. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how you can use SPT in more detail. Just give exit and then press enter and you will come out of this SPT command prompt. So this is how you can install SPT and Scala on your Windows 10 operating system. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please wait, comment and subscribe and bye for now.